In this tutorial you learn the basics about how to use GenX to fit polarized neutron reflectometry data. When you start up the program for the first time it will look something like this. On the left you have a list for your data sets, on the top right a panel of graphs and on the bottom right a panel for parameter settings. If there is no sample tab down here we will need to go to settings, start up profile and select reflectivity and also load the reflectivity plugin in settings plugins load reflectivity. I load a second plugin called simple layer we will use for our sample definition and now we can uh, set a new model so we say new and select the spec and x model which is the default neutron and x-ray re reflectometry model of the program. To be able to load uh, a data set from the magnetism reflectometer, go to settings, data loader and select the SNS MR data loader. Now we can click on this data set and say import. And the default setting is a linear plot so when we right click set this to logarithmic scale. We also want to load the spin down channel so we use the green plus to add a second data set and then load the spin down. To be able to switch back and forth between them there is a small bug so we first need to use the simulate button and now we can click on one of the data sets to show the individual data set and now we change the colors using the plot options. So for the first I use both red and for the second both blue. And to plot them together you can control click on the second one and now we see the spin up and spin down. Before we set up the model we want to define our two, power, uh, two materials that we have in the sample. So we go to the materials tab that's from the simple layer plugin and we can say add material and so here we enter the formula of the material so for example here strontium titanate. We can either enter the lattice parameters here and the number of formula units per unit cell or the mass density of the material. For strontium manganate the lattice constant is 3.905 and it is a cubic system. And you can see now the density here is calculated as one formula unit per 3.905 angstrom to the cube. We also want to add the length of manganite. A second option instead of uh, entering the parameters manually is you can use a crystallographic information file as you can get for example in the ICSD database. And from that directly you get the elements and the unit cell parameters. And so now we have the LMO and SMO. And to define the sample structure you go here to the sample tab. At the moment it's just the substrate and the ambient layer for air. So the substrate, we uh, select the substrate and select strontium titanate and with the blue button here you'll see the B and F and density parameters are set automatically. To be able to add layers you first need as at least one stack. With this in insert a stack. A stack is a set of layers that can also be repeated if you like. So let's call that LS. And to add to that length of the manganite we select again LMO and add one and a second layer for a surface layer with probably reduced magnetization. To define layer parameters you can double click on one of the layers and you can see here F and B are the x-ray and neutron scattering length, Den dense is the density, D is the thickness which is ignored for substrates and sigma is the roughness. So let's say two angstrom roughness for the substrate is uh, a pretty normal value. And for the layers we set 150 angstrom 
and three angstrom roughness. And the magnetic moment here, you define as Bohr magnetron per formula unit. So let's set this to 3.5 for our intermediate layer. And again, 150 angstroms, three angstrom roughness, and let's say 2.5. Before we can simulate this, we first need to define which of our two data set is spin up and which is spin down. For that, you go to simulations and add an option here, which is instrument set poll and set this to UU, which is for up up polarization. And the same for the second data set, instrument set poll DD. So now we have all the sample parameters. We need to also define our incident beam parameters. So again, on the sample tab, you have this edit instruments button and we set the coordinate system to be Q uh, and the probe is neutron pol for polarized. And for resolution, we use full convolution varying resolution. This means every point can have a different resolution and uh, this rest points is used for the number of uh, simulations used for each individual point and rest range is the number of sigmas around the center that are calculated. And to define the ex exact value of the resolution for each point, we can use uh, additional column that is loaded by the data loader. So for data set one, we go set instrument set res and this column is data zero dot extra data dot x e for x error. And we add the same to the second data set. Just data one in this case. So now I can use again the lightning button to simulate. And as you can see, we have the splitting between spin up and spin down. But it, now the thickness looks a bit too big because the oscillation frequency is higher than in the data set. To define which parameters to fit, go to the grid. And here you can just right click on a parameter line and select which parameter to be fitted. So here at first the two layer thicknesses and then the layer roughnesses. and also the roughness of the substrate. And in the addition, we want to fit the magnetic moment of the two parts of the layer. Before we start to fit, we want to select physically sensible ranges for our parameters. For example, we don't want any of the thicknesses to go below 20 angstroms and uh, don't want them to go further than 200 angstroms and the roughnesses shouldn't be more than 15 angstrom each and the magnetic moments we want to cap at four bar magneton first we select which of the parameters to be fitted at in this case of a relatively simple model we can actually fit everything and now we take a look at the optimizer settings which define how the fit is run so here figure of merit is log, so uh, logarithmic difference between data set and simulation. You could also select uh, log bars, which uh, includes error bars or chi-square with error bars, or for example, Q to the four weighted linear differences. The population size here defines how many parameter sets are calculated per generation which means here with relative size that uh, the number of free parameters times five will be calculated. And the maximum generations is the number of iterations before it will automatically stop. Here 150 is a quite good value. If you have a multi-core processor, you can use parallel processing here and uh, should set the number of processes as either the number of CPUs or if you have an Intel 
CPU uh, the number of threads you have. And chunk size you could, uh, should set as uh, the same as here the relative size. So now we would like to start to fit, but here the figure of merit uh, is not a number, which means um, that uh, at least one value here is zero or below zero. And we can see here in the spin down data set, there's one point missing because it's below zero. So to get rid of that, we select the second data set and uh, use the calculator button. And now we replace the Y value by, y, uh, by the maximum of y and 10 to the minus seven. So every zero will be ex changed by 10 to the minus seven. And if we simulate now again, you see the log uh, figure of merit now has a normal number. So we can start the fitting. As you can see, the plot is automatically updated when uh, the fit finds better parameters. You can have a look at the figure of merit versus the number of iterations. So when there's nothing happening anymore, you can stop the fit and you can look at the parameters and how they vary. And here we see that, for example, parameter four and zero are hitting their upper limits. So we can stop and exchange the upper limits here, let's say, 50 and 20. You should always consider if the fitting values make any sense for your model. In our case, the fit um, reduced the thickness of the lower layer and increased the thickness of the upper layer, although we expect the, uh, the surface of the sample to be less magnetic. So we exchange those thicknesses and fit again. Changing again some limit ranges. Now we can have a look at the scattering length density of the film here on the SLD and you see there's almost no nuclear contrast between the film and the substrate but we have a magnetic layer here and it has a bit lower value close to the surface. There was a, another data set measured for this sample above TC where the magnetization is completely gone. We can load this into the same model Uh, 
let's set this to be green. And now we want to define that the sample is non-magnetic for this last data set. So we can go to simulations and set the both LMO layers magnetization to zero for this particular data set. And we also want to again define the resolution for this data set separately as we did with the other two. So instrument set resolution and this time data two. Now we can simulate. So now we have in the same model the non-magnetic and the magnetic data set. We can also fit those two models together. So if we are satisfied with our results and want to have an estimate on the errors of our fitting parameters, after such a fit we can use the calculate error bars button and this calculates here uh, upper and lower limits for the, the inter individual fitting parameters calculated from this last fit. If we want to export the fitted data set, we can use file export export data which saves it as an ASCII file of the um, Q versus intensity data. To save the scattering length density profile use reflect export SLD.